Welcome. We'd like to thank you for attending this session, Mastering Drupal 8 Views. Um, my name is Greg Marshall. I'm a digital technology developer manager, or in more simple words, I'm a Drupal architect for Accenture Digital, which is part of Accenture, and technically inside that, Accenture Interactive. I've been on Drupal.org since 2006, so roughly 10, 11 years. I went to my very first DrupalCon in 2010 in San Francisco. That's when I decided to switch from being a user of Drupal to a developer in Drupal. Um, I happened to be a Acquia Grandmaster in both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, and I wrote a book. Hi, my name is Amanda. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in business and a um, master's certificate in energy and sustainability. And when neither of those really helped me get a job, I ended up uh, going to Drupal Easy Academy, uh, my dad's suggestion. Um, I've been a Drupal.org user, um, user since 2008 because I had previously um, tried my hand at Drupal a little. Um, but then I decided to focus on school. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I initially got into Drupal in 2008, but I decided to focus on school because um, I thought it would be better for it to help me get a job, and then ended up coming back to it later. My first DrupalCon was Baltimore. I'm an Acquia certified site builder. Um, I interned on a UN humanitarian response Drupal site. Um, I'm working right now as a Drupal developer at Brad Jones LLC, but I'm looking for something a little more four times, so if you know of anything, let me know. And uh, this is Jackson. He's one of the characters in my dad's book. Okay, because I work for a large company, we have the standard legal disclaimer. Basically, what this says is I am not here on behalf of Accenture. I am here as an individual, and they take no responsibility for anything I might say. So to put this talk into place and sort of set the stage for it, as a family, we get together whenever the kids are in town, and we'll tend to go out to a restaurant and have breakfast. And normally at those breakfasts, if it were before last fall when Amanda started Drupal Easy Academy, we would talk about sewing or crafts or travel or cooking or things like that. This particular breakfast was in November last year, and my oldest son and his new wife were, were down visiting from Wisconsin, and we're at this, this restaurant, and Amanda and I are sitting at one end of the table debugging a problem she's having with a Git repository. And at that point, at this bre family breakfast, it dawned on me, family meals will never be the same again because all of a sudden we have something to talk about. So what we decided to do, just for fun, is take that conversation and sort of adapt it to views and talk about views like we were having breakfast at Sam's number three. So Amanda, how's that project with you and going? It's going great. Uh, we're getting d deeper into Drupal theming. I've been able to build a few views. I thought I was really understanding views from my class, but I'm still struggling with the terminology. Terminology is always a problem with Drupal. Drupal tends to overload most terms. So we have the same word, we'll have different meanings depending on what context it's in. So let's, let's set the stage with some basic words. Views is the views module, which in Drupal 8 is part of core, but before Drupal 8 was actually its own separated, separate project. And the way to think about views as a module is it creates dynamic lists. So it's a list builder for Drupal. Um, those of you that have been in computing long enough can think of it as the Crystal Reports for Drupal. So Crystal Reports was a report writer back in the days of DBase and, and other databases. And then when you talk about view in the singular, you typically are talking about a single one of these lists. As an example of something you would do with views, think about the, the case where you want to display the five most recent blog posts as a block on your website. So if you did it manually, what you would have to do is you would have to add the blog post, publish the blog post, then go back to the block, edit the block, add the title and link 
deleting the title and link of the, la of the oldest um, blog post. And that would give you the five most recent. And you would have to do those two steps every time you did something. With views, what you can do is add the blog post, and automatically the block will update itself with the five most recent blog posts. So you get this kind of dynamic list building that becomes so, so important to, to Drupal. Views was the number one contributed module for Drupal 7. So if you looked at the list of modules, the module that was most used in every, almost every website, about 80% of the websites was, was views. So it's, when it came into core, that was a very natural thing. I think it would have probably gone in Drupal 7, except it's so big that it was hard to get it integrated in time. But now with it being part of core, the front page and many of the Drupal administration pages are now views. So if you look at it, the front page itself is just a, simply a view. The content list editing page is a view. The content list maintenance page. The files view is a view. Who's online is actually a view. The people list, so the user maintenance screen that's part of Drupal is now a view. And what that means to us as developers and site builders is that literally any one of those can be modified and adapted to be specifically what you want. Once you get down to the, a single view, then you have to think about the parts. So there are some components to a view that sort of work from the top down or from the biggest part. The base or view type is a view, what you're building a view of. Then you have a display within that base or view type. Within that display, you can pick a format. And then you have another, di a, you have a display, and then you have a display type within that. And then you have filters and sorts, which then let you give, get, make your view more things. So if you look, the view edit screen is very complex. And it's complex because it does so much. So if we look at it in three sections, basically, the first part is the, the fields we're going to display, the filters, and the sort criteria, and how we're going to display it, whether it's, whether it's got a title. The, at the very top, it says it's a block. So that's the display itself. And then the fact that it's an unformatted list is the display type. In the middle, you have block settings or page settings. If it's a page, something general to that part of it, then almost every view has a header, a footer, and a no results option. And these are areas where you can figure what happens either above, below, or if nothing com is going to come out of the query that you've built that goes with that view. And finally, views comes with built-in paging. So if you have a lot of data and you don't want to display it all in one page, 10,000 records, you can display them by default, 10 at a time, and it'll just it'll let you go forward, backwards, the first, the last, depending on which pager you use. And then finally on the right, you've got the advanced section, which in a normal views installation is by default closed. One of the recommendations I make is that you change the settings, your views settings off the views listing page to always display the advanced section. Because there are two parts of it that really you want to use. One is contextual filters, and the other is relationships. And we'll come back to that. The rest of the advanced truly is advanced, and very frequently you'll find you won't use. But, but those two, contextual filters and relationships, you do use. So Amanda, does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you. OK, so let's, you're still doing a side project for um, a real estate company, aren't you? Yes. OK, so tell you what. Let's show everyone how you can adapt a view. Let's take the existing content list view, and we want to adapt it to be a view that's displayed when a real estate agent logs into that website and is given only their properties that they are allowed to maintain. And we're only going to let them edit. We're not going to let them delete or do a lot of the other things it would do. So. Oh, this is what I want it to look like when you're done. So I want just the address, the status, the updated, and none of that extra clutter. So my first step is to dupl duplicate the content maintenance view. I don't want one little mistake to screw up my whole project. Then under the, 
Then I changed the title to Property Maintenance by clicking on the word Content under Title. Under the field section, I removed the bulk operation form by clicking on the field name, clicking on the remove link at the bottom. I also removed the content type and the author user fields since this view will only display the current user's properties. I also removed the translation language filter since that site only has English. Finally, I changed the content type filter from being exposed being, and being fixed and selecting the property content type. It's important to save your changes so that they're permanent. This shows the before and after the edits. That was relatively easy, but a fresh copy of Drupal only has two content types, basic page and article, and they don't have very many fields. Why is views around? Is it only for administration screens? Good question. Views is around because of structured content. So in Drupal 7, we added fields module. Before that, it was called CCK, but it gave you the ability to structure your content and add lots of different fields. Something else that's unique in Drupal 8 is that relationships are built in. So in Drupal 7, you had to add the entity relationship module or entity reference module or the node reference module in order to have one content type refer to a different content type. In Drupal 8, that's just built in as part of it. And so you have different kinds of fields. You can have text fields, you can have number fields, Boolean fields, file fields, image fields, or reference fields to other, other nodes. Um, and then through contributed modules, you can add different kinds of field types. So one of the ones that I see frequently and that I know you're using on your real estate site is a geolocation field, which allows us to put longitude and latitude on that website in order to do that. So if you look at the data structure for the real estate website you're working on, it's very complex. And to the audience, I know you can't read that. It isn't intended to be read. But basically what it says is there are a lot of fields, they're of different types, and basically there are four kinds. There's a property type, there's an owner or a realtor, they're similar but different, and there's an open house type. And if I actually drew a map of how these all go together, you've got the property type in the middle, it's being referred to by an open house, and the direction of these arrows will become important later. Um, it uses realtors, it also has property owners, and it can have more than one of each, so 10 people can own a property together, or you can have two realtors help sell it. And then there are two kinds of entities that most people don't think of as being separate, like nodes, but they're taxonomy terms. So we have a county taxonomy and a neighborhood taxonomy that we've defined for this particular site. So why don't you walk us through building a new view for this? It's pretty easy to get going. It just starts with a simple form, and as the boxes are checked, it becomes more complex. The new view wizard only does the most common use cases, page and block. Other displays, like attachment, have to be manually created on the edit page. So if we look at the starting wizard page, the questions are pretty easy. You have to give your view a name, which will automatically create the internal name that Drupal uses. Then you, then you tell views the views type or what kind of entity you want to base the view on. Content is the most common, so it's also the default. Then assuming you pick content, you can select a specific content type like property and the initial sort order. Finally, you can check boxes to create a page display or a block display or even a rest endpoint. Of course, in Drupal, nothing is as simple as the starting wizard would lead you to believe. When I click the create a page, a whole bunch of additional settings magically appear. Let's zoom in on just the page settings you'll see. I can set the page title and the path. I can select what kind of display I want on that page. In my property maintenance view, it was a table, so I'm going to try that now. I can also set up a pager for when there are too many results to display on a single page. And I can add an RSS feed. Fortunately, except for the base view type, I can change anything I set up here later on the view edit screen. So Dad, what are the various parts of a view? OK, well, we went through them very briefly, but let's talk about the various kind in more detail. So you've got the base or view type. This is the kind of view that you first set. And this is the one thing that once you set it, you can't change. And so the most common use is content. The other thing you can do is you can actually do a view of content revisions, which the first time I looked at this, I wondered why. And then I was, was chatting with some people in Minnesota that work for a state agency, and they by law are required to publish the, the edit log for every page that they have on this particular website. 
So the, the ability to do that automatically and just attach it as, as part of the page is, is a really convenient for them. Because comments are now entities and not a unique thing, you can do views of content, of comments. You can do views of log entries. So if you've got the DB log turned on. Now the challenge with this is it's a very interesting capability, but of course one of the recommended best practices is that you turn off the DB log in production, which means your view goes away with it because you have nothing to reference. Um, you can do views of the file system. You can do views of taxonomy terms, and you can do views of users. So you have lots of different base or view types that you can work from. Once you've picked a view type, then what you do is you pick a display type. And the displays can be page, which is the most common, or block, which is almost as common. There's a unique display that's part of every view that you probably never noticed is there, and that's called the master or default display. It's there in every view. It disappears as soon as you create any other display. So there is a settings on your settings page that you can go to to always display the master, but it's very handy if you're building theme and variation displays to edit the common part in the master display and let it ripple through, and then just do the unique parts, the overrides in the individual displays. You can have a display called an attachment. And that's a view, or a, a kind of display for a particular view that is attached to the same view. So if you have a page, you can create an attachment that creates a, basically a second view as part of that view. And they can either share the same parameters or they can also be, have different fields completely. You have an embed, which interestingly enough, really doesn't do anything in early versions of Drupal 8. I haven't checked it recently. But it, it was pretty clear that the intent was at some point to limit your ability to embed a view in code only to the embed view type so that it would become a little cleaner. At the very minimum, it's a recommendation I would make to use it if you're going to embed that view in code because that's a signal to a site builder that this particular view is being used in code to be, create displays. You might not want to edit it without understanding what the implications of that are. You also have an entity reference view, which is a very interesting one. So when you create an entity reference field in a content type, you right now the default be behavior is an autocomplete. So as you start to type the title of the entity that you want to be referencing from the other content type, that's what shows up. What you can do with this view is you can click the widget, change it to the entity reference, select a view, and now you have all of the selection and sorting capabilities that views provide you in a pull-down list that you can use with, with entities. So instead of autocomplete, you can give people just what they need to know. The, the next and last one is an RSS feed. That's been around in views since the beginning and it allows you to create RSS feeds that are used by other websites for aggregation. And then the more general, as of Drupal 8, REST export. So now what you can do is, if the REST module is enabled, the REST export becomes available. You have the ability to use views with contextual filters to actually structure what kind of data and how that data is going to come back out through the REST export. Once you've done that, then you have format options for whatever you're looking at. So you'll have a grid, which in Drupal 8 is actually a grid and not an HTML table like it is in Drupal 7 and Drupal 6. You have the HTML list. You have an unformatted list. You have tables. And you have anything that can be added by contributed modules. So Views Accordion is one that I've seen used on a lot of sites. It gives the ability to create accordions very easily. Um, you have a sli view slideshow, which creates those carousels that every designer tells you you should never have and every website has. Um, and then you can actually create maps. So you actually have modules and parts of modules, like the geolocation module, provides a, a views integration. And so I can create a view as long as I've put the location, geolocation data in as the output, I can go ahead and feed that directly into a Google map. Um, so 
What's interesting is, of course, every format has options, the table being the most interesting of them. It has options upon options. So you can actually make, once you've created a table with a view, you can have it be click sortable. So the sort you define isn't necessarily the sort that the user has to see. You can take two, field, or two fields and combine them together in a single column. So in one of the examples I, I did, you, you have the, the realtor's name and his phone number separated by a comma. That's something very easily to do within that. Once you've defined the format, then what you do is you define typically the fields. The alternative is you can do, use display modes. And so I can say I want content with, the, with either the full display mode or the default display mode or a user-created display mode. I personally believe that it's better to use fields in this case because what it does is it puts the ordering of the fields and how they're formatted along with the view, whereas if you use a display mode, it's somewhere else in Drupal and you have to remember that you're using that display mode to control how this particular view is being put out. And so each field, of course, has lots of settings. In the case of date, you can pick the date format that you're going to use. You can pick the time zone that it's going to go with. You can decide whether or not to have a label attached with this particular field or not. If so, what the text should be, whether it's the field label or whether you want to override that and put your own on. You can do style settings and rewrites and things like that. And one of the things that I found very powerful ever since Views added it in Drupal 6, I think, um, is the field rewrite. And so you check the box that says override the output of this field, and all of a sudden you have the ability to rewrite this field as everything that's above it or using all the values that's above it. So one of the common mistakes that gets made is, well, I've got it, it's in my field list, but I can't see it in this list. It has to be above it in the list. But one of the options you had on the field is exclude from display, and you'd wonder, why would you put something in a view if you're going to exclude it from the display? Why bother? Well, the field rewrites is actually where, where you use that. And so it's very easy to take two relatively disjointed fields and reassemble them, let's say, as a link with a very custom URL being built as part of it. Or you can, you can do um, more complex kinds of, of things. The other thing that I found really interesting is, I, in Drupal 7, the field replacement patterns are square brackets, the token module. And if you notice, these are the double curly brackets, which it was very, very late in, in doing this that I realized that looks a whole lot like twig. And sure enough, that field is actually a twig template inside your view. So anything you can do in twig, you can do for a field rewrite inside views. So just as an example, I put a for loop, and I had it display characters separated by asterisks simply by rewriting a, a field with the twig capability. So it's a very, very powerful capability. Um, so Let's talk about filters. Why don't you tell us how they work? Filters let you select just the part of the data that a view might return. For example, one of our favorite shows is Tiny House Nation, which is a show about houses smaller than 500 square feet. I thought it would be fun to have a page of tiny houses on the real estate site. To do that, I set a filter to limit the results to listings where the property square footage is less than 500 square feet. I could do that on an, an, an extra display of the main property view so it was really pretty easy. Exposed filters let site visitors choose what values to see. Like in my real estate site, this lets visitors select ranges for square footage, asking price, and number of bedrooms to select just the right house at the right price for them. So dad, I see that for a neighborhood, I can filter by the neighborhood taxonomy, but do I have to create a different display for each neighborhood, each with the filter set the way I want, or is there a better way? I've seen a lot of views built with 10 different displays, one for each taxonomy term. There is a different way, and that way is called a contextual filter. And it's one of the cases where views is sort of confusing because you have the filters on the left-hand first column, and the contextual filters are sitting over in the right-hand advanced column, and there's really nothing more advanced about a contextual filter than it gets the value you're looking for to filter from the URL. And so if you'll notice, we have available property listing by neighborhood, and it says city center with a percent 20. When I develop the taxonomy for the property, 
I didn't think about using it as a contextual filter, and I put spaces in my taxonomy terms. And when you have a space in taxonomy term, when it's put into the URL, it has to have the percent 20. It's translated into what URL friendly thing. But what it lets me do is literally by saying city center, I can now give an available property listings just for city center. And that's, that's the part of it. And the way I did that was I went into contextual filters, I clicked add, I add the taxonomy term, and I configure it um, with the particular taxonomy I want, display only the things I want. It also has a very powerful feature, which is something I use a lot, where if you don't have a value in the URL, what do you want the default to be? And you can set that to a fixed value. You can actually have it read some of the context, like what user is logged in, or what page or node you're on. So there's all this extra information. So you'll find a lot of times you're using contextual filters, not using the URL, but using the ability to pick up default values out of other things. So Amanda, walk me through how you change that order. Views wouldn't be too useful if everyone displayed results by date the entity was created. But as you said, this is Drupal, so anything is possible. In views, I can change the ordering or sort criteria to be any field and either ascending or descending. I can also have multiple levels of sort. So if the first sort criteria, neighborhoods, returns several results, uh, I can sort it by another level, like title, and can sort within that group. Looking at the settings for the sort criteria field, I can see you can expose the sort to let visitors change if they want ascending or descending. In this example, I'm sorting a date field, which adds a granularity option, so I can sort down to the second or maybe just the day, and then use the second level sort to sort by another field, like alphabetically by title. Sorting is pretty easy, but using the structured content, like you described, I wanted to have a view that shows fields from the realtor in my property listing. But when I try to add the field, it doesn't show up. Is there a way to do that? Of course, this is Drupal. That's where relationships come in. So the other advanced option that you'll use a lot is called relationships. When you add a relationship, you're basically associating one content type through an entity reference to another content type. And when you do that, you actually acquire the fields from both content types. Now, you remember when I put up the picture that showed the property with all of the other content types that could be related to it, and I had arrows drawn? So it went from property to realtor, from property to owner, from property to taxonomy terms, but it happened to go from open house to property. That, those arrows are important when you're using relationships. And the reason is, if you follow the arrow, it's relatively performant. If you don't follow the arrow, Drupal has to basically read the entire other side and figure out what happens to be pointing backwards. So Drupal doesn't have a problem doing that for you. I think in Drupal 7, you had to use a, a module to accomplish the, that. But now, so what you have are two options. If you pick a particular field name, you're going to see two options. And that is content that referenced from and content using. So if it's content using, I'm following the arrow. If it's contents referenced from, I'm going out to the other side and trying to find things that are pointed at me. Does that make sense to everyone? Once I do that, and you add a field from the second content type, it won't show up. And the reason is, you also need to go in and tell it which relationship to actually use. And the reason for that is Drupal allows you to recycle fields from content type to content type. So in theory, you could have a view, you could have two relationships, both of which has a field with, that's based on the same exact field. And the, it, you need to be able to tell it which one it is. So unfortunately, in that relatively fringe case, causes Drupal to want to be more general. So in every case, you have to go back and tell it exactly which content type you're using. Once you do that, and almost always, it'll, when you pull the pull-down list, you only get one option, so it's, it's not a big deal. Um, the other thing is, you'll notice, when, now when you're looking at my field list, I've got title twice. So I did something that probably wasn't the world's best idea for, 
for a user interface. I use the title field that's part of every entity, um, especially every content type. In the property, it happens to be the address, and that's what I change the label to. In the realtor, it happens to be the realtor's name, and that's what I change the label to. So on the user input screen, it isn't so bad, but when I'm doing development, I have to now keep track of, there's a title that's a, uh, the address that's part of property, and there's a title that's realtor, and you notice it's marked as hidden. And that's because if you looked at realtor phone, you would find out that the realtor phone is actually rewriting the field to be realtor name comma realtor phone. So Amanda, before we take, take questions, why don't you show a few of the, um, the views you built? I haven't started working on the theme yet, so all you'll see today is Bartik. On the front page, we have two views using add-on modules. The picture of the house is actually a carousel or a slideshow that changes about every five seconds. Below it is a map of available properties. When you click on a map, on a map pin, it opens a box with the relevant data. Looks like I need to figure out why that one is showing up twice. This is the basic what's for sale page showing a view with various exposed filters that visitors can select. It's in a table format and has groupings by neighborhood. This is another display from the main property display that is using a contextual filter to only show the neighborhood cent city center. Finally, this is a views infinite scroll picture gallery of available properties. It starts off only showing four properties, but as you scroll down, it adds properties four at a time. It's kind of like how Facebook does its timeline. That's the end of the um, presentation part of the talk. We're more than willing to take questions. However, we want to remind everyone that on Friday is Sprint Day. Please come. Uh, Amanda will be there. She's actually uh, helping me be a Sprint mentor this year. And I'll be there, and we hope we'll see all of you there, because it's through the community getting together on days like Sprint Days that we have a more powerful and environment to work in. And finally, there's, there, excuse me, there are evaluations on every page. So if you go to the session URL for this particular session, there's an evaluation. You fill it out. We would love to hear your, your feedback. So with that, we'll take questions, job offers, whatever. Um, so there are microphones because we're being recorded. If you would use the microphone, we would dearly appreciate it. Come on. Everybody's got a views question. Um, what is the best practice to embed a view into a node? Do you use the Twig way or do you use a contributed model? My favorite way, and I think the one that's cleanest within the Drupal way of doing business, is I create a view that's a block, and I place the block with visibility on that particular node or node type. So views can be build blocks. Blocks can easily be paced, placed on particular nodes. And if you want a particular view that goes with a particular node to change depending on which node it's on, that's where contextual filters comes in really handy. So you can have a you can have a contextual filter which can't have as a block, can't have a URL, and the only way it'll find out what filter it needs to use is by using something like the node ID from the page it's being displayed on. Okay, and what if you want to embed the view inside the content? So um, you have some text, some intro text, and some, um, after that the view, and in the end a gallery or something? That's more challenging. I'll be very honest, I haven't done it in so long. I know in Drupal 7 there was a module that would let you do that. Basically added it to content types. Huh? Well, not panelizer, not panels or panelizer. I think what you're talking about is like, almost like through C the CK editor, the WYSIWYG, you'd have a button that would say, insert a view here, and you could do it. Otherwise, if you can, if you can split it into two fields, then you can use blocks again because it'd be really easy to put um, a view in the in between two others. Okay. And ultimately, when you want to go really kinky, you can use paragraphs or panels, and and basically have stacks. I know we we did a Drupal 8 project with with paragraphs, and so we had different paragraph types, one of which was a view, and so we could add a view in a particular. But it was that what's a very popular style now, where there are a bunch of bands and each band might be a slightly different kind of display. Okay, and inside the paragraph, how do you embed the view inside the paragraph? 
you can't do it with HTML. You'd have to do it by generating the, the HTML through, to do it right, you'd have to do it by generating it from something that, that could combine them like that. So you can't really put a view in the middle of a paragraph easily, cleanly. Okay. <laughs> not, not within a single field. Like I said, you could have two fields, body one, body two, and easily put a view in between them. But, and I think, like I said, in Drupal 7, there was a module that lets you put in, it's sort of like a token. Views huh? Views insert. V views insert, okay. I knew it was, it's been a while. But it basically, it lets you format like a token, and as long as you have the token module turned on, it's just yet another way to, to, to insert variables within your, your copy. Okay, thank you. Other questions? To ask about, I think one of the things you can do in, in terms of output is to um, tap into the REST APIs and things like that. So you, instead of outputting HTML, um, you can do JSON and others like that and then start um, decoupling a bit. And um, would you recommend using views to create these sort of feeds or are there better ways of doing that? To for, okay. for REST purposes. With the caveat that I am not a front-end developer. I may have pretended to be one a couple times. But, um, and so I don't do JavaScript with frameworks and, and, and decoupled kind of Drupal approaches. Um, the way I'm hearing from working with developers that do, they're doing it one of two ways. They're either using the JSON API module, which is a slightly different philosophy than the REST API that's built into core, but gives you that same capability. Um, very frequently, it depends. If you have relationships that you want to expose together, basically denormalizing, views is a great way to do that. If you have content that's just simply being output, you can do that directly from the REST API that's part of core. So there are really two, three different ways, and you might mix or match a couple of them together. But more and more, I'm hearing that the people who are doing true decoupled are using the JSON API because it seems to have a more natural interface than, than the built-in REST API. Other questions? I feel like there's nothing else. Hello? Well, with that, we thank you. Um, if anyone's interested in the book, there are postcards in the back. There are postcards up here. They have a discount code. So if you're going to buy the book, you're going to buy it probably in the next couple of weeks because it's cheaper. Um, with that, we'll thank you for attending and have a great DrupalCon. How did we do time-wise? 45 minutes? Wasn't it? Or was it? Yeah, it was 15 after, wasn't it? Wait. Now you're going to ask questions. <laughs> you yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a question. I just went, you should tomorrow. I, I tell you what, I've got, I've got a, a, a views filter issue, uh, and I'm going to be I'm going to work on the day. I think I can solve it a bit. Uh, I just want to, I just want to see what, what I've got is I've got events, input it, it's XML from feeds. Okay, okay so they're a content type. A content type, yeah, and it's got a unique 